From a spectrum perspective, probably the most interesting transition that we've uh, went through recently to try to better prepare spectrum in the airwaves for the digital future is this move to digital television. And I have to admit, when I heard about this, I was totally shocked and I thought it would never work because this is TV, man. I mean, everybody needs a TV, everyone needs their TV to work. And so what happened in 2009? So in the years leading up to 2009, there was a move uh, that was initiated in the US Congress to eliminate analog television broadcasting. What does that mean? So there were large parts of the spectrum. So remember, let's go back to our spectrum chart. There were large pieces of the spectrum that were and still are reserved for analog TV broadcasting. This, this is an example. Here's another example. There's another piece down here. And that's how, if you had an old TV set that received channels over the air, that's how you received those channels. And it turned out that the way those channels were being transmitted was very inefficient. It used up a lot of spectrum, way more than it needed to. And so the move to digital television involved, I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, there were these free converter boxes. Um, so the government would actually send you a coupon. I think I got one of these for some reason. Um, and you could go out and you could take a Radio Shack and you could get this device that was maybe $20 otherwise that would take these new digital TV signals and convert them to an analog signal that your old TV could display. So this was a way to sort of transition. It was a converter that would take the digital signals and convert them to analog signals so you didn't have to upgrade your entire television. If you bought a television in the last six years and probably in the last 10 years, you have a television that already has a digital TV tuner so it's ready for this. But the question is, why did we do this? So remember, we have this really sort of sclerotic, old-fashioned, and non-internet ready digital frequency map or, or frequency map. And this was not designed around the needs of the internet. And so one of the things that we're gonna try to start to do is figure out how can we re redesign that to, to better support uh, the internet and mobile devices. So let me give you an example. This piece of spectrum right here, um, it's, it's a pretty good ch size chunk. You can see, you know, it, it takes up a fair amount of space on the chart. This is probably, if you look at the ISM bands, this is probably several times as large as the ISM bands. Um, this has two TV channels in it. That's it. That's all the analog TV channels that this huge piece of spectrum was able to transmit. And so this is a really, really bad use of spectrum. And so what we started to do, and again, it's a shocking that we were able to pull this off, is we started, at, at, there was a date in 2009 where TV stations could no longer transmit analog TV signals. They could only transmit digital signals. And what we've done is we started to take pieces of spectrum like this and repurpose them. What's happened over the past five or six years is that the US has held an auction and companies like telecom providers, Sprint, AT&T, Verizon, uh, Google, I think at one point was considering bidding, have um, put in bids to purchase to licenses for this, P these, this spectrum that we've created, we've sort of uh, freed up through the move to digital television. And so this is actually really exciting. This is the kind of the first example of how we can start to modernize these frequency spectrum allocations to try to prepare us better for the 21st and the 22nd century. And the fact that we were able to upgrade people's televisions in the process is just a sign of how important this is, but also the fact that it's actually going to work.